Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Collins Prepper with a video about a bug out bag coax antenna. I saw this on the internet and I thought this would be a great idea for a bug out bag communications kit for VHF and UHF frequencies and what it is is you take a piece of RG58 coax, strip the outer jacket off to the frequency length you need and then separate the center conductor from the braided shield and use those two parts as a dipole. So this way you have no rigid antenna elements, you just have the flexible coax split at the end that matches your frequency that you're going to be operating on. So the first thing I did is went to one of my favorite websites and I'll put a link down below for a dipole antenna calculator and I plugged in my operating frequency I wanted the antenna to work on which was 146.000 megahertz. Used the pull down menu to get the length for one side of the antenna and that came out to be 19 inches and a quarter, 19 and a quarter inches. And then I went ahead and pulled the jacket off and made the two sides. Uh, but if you're a GMRS or a MERS user, then you could go out and get the operating frequency that you use because you can have an external antenna in the GMRS or MERS radio services and use the same formula to plug in the length of the operating frequency you have and to to create those two halves of the antenna. Now in the end I had to shorten this antenna and you'll see this in the live portion of the video coming up but I got some uh, terminal lugs from Radio Shack and soldered them on to the end and that gave me a place to tie my 550 cord to pull this antenna up between two trees. So after cutting off doing the testing cutting off the ends my length of this antenna in the end was 18 inches and 7 eighths. Uh, I started out at 19 and a quarter inches, but I had to shorten it up because the SWR is a little bit too high. So I'm going to break here and we'll roll into the live portion. Okay, everybody, I got the antenna up. I just strung it up between the trees with some 550 cord. And I used those little uh, terminal lugs and made a knot with the 550 cord. And what we have here is a, a dipole antenna. There's a radiating element, the uh, other side of the ground shield for the other side of the antenna. And again, another terminal lug. And that goes over to that tree. And then I got the RG58 coax going back up towards the house. So what I'll do is I'll break here and we'll hook up the ocean radio to this and see how it performs with the watt meter. Okay, we got the radio connected to the watt meter. And that goes through the watt meter and out this RG58 coax. And I think I probably got about 50 feet there. And that goes up to the dipole antenna strung between the trees. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but it's there. And it's tied off to those two trees. So let's go ahead and put some uh, RF power to this and see what kind of uh, SWR we have. So everybody, I'm back. I got the radio tuned for 145.885 because that's what I'm licensed for here. And it's connected to the watt meter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the transmit button and we're putting out about four watts down and we're getting about a half a watt back. So we have some reflected power and the needles are crossing at about two to one SWR. So that's the, the max threshold for, the ant for an antenna typically. So we're right on the borderline of not being a good antenna, but this is far better than what you would see with a rubber antenna on top of the radio. So I'm going to take a break here and see, uh, change frequencies and see if this antenna is too long or too short. Okay, I'm back guys. I uh, trimmed off a half inch uh, each side of this dipole antenna to increase the operating frequency of this antenna. Uh, when doing the testing, the SWR was better as I lowered in frequency which means the antenna was too long when I increased the frequency I, when I increased the frequency I wanted to operate on which was 145 900 so by shortening that up I should have increased the operational frequency for this antenna to make it resonant so again I tied it up to the trees with the 550 cord and we'll walk over to the radio and see how it looks on the SWR meter and the snow never ends over here Okay, so here we got the, the ocean radio. I'm going to set this to 
145900. Okay, and we're going to see what it looks like on the SWR meter. And look at that, that's much better. That's about 1.3 to 1 with 4 watts forward. Uh, that's not bad at all. So, you wouldn't see an SWR or performance like that at all on a rubber antenna. So the advantage here for a bug out bag is if you're at a location where coverage is a little bit scratchy, you can pull out this sealed expedient coax antenna and string it up in a tree and you will greatly improve your radio's performance, reception and range by doing this. So what I'm going to do here is see where that SWR is sitting there at about 1.3 to 1. I'm going to lower the frequency here to 144, 100, which is the bottom end of the operating authorization I have here, and see if that gets any better. And it did. So this antenna is still a little bit too long, but I'm going to call that good uh, because I'm pretty sure if I had a MERS capable radio at about 151, because you're allowed to have an external antenna on MERS, I bet this SWR probably would still stay below 2 to 1. So there you go, a field expedient antenna made out of coax cable with no rigid components, so nothing to break when you shove it in the bag, strung up between two trees, hooked up to the very popular and famous Ocean Radio, or Waxen Radio, and the SWR is uh, not bad at all. Here you go, you can see it right there. So I would call this a, a good antenna and something worth throwing in your bug out bag. As always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper with the bug out bag VHF radio.